Hello friends, welcome to any 3ds Max tutorial. In this lesson, we are going to learn about the selection tools in 3ds Max, which are, in my opinion, very important for you to be working very fast and not get frustrated, I guess, while working. Uh, let's start with maximizing our uh, viewport and let's create some teapots, like a lot of random teapots on the scene. And I will show you how to how the selection tools work in 3ds Max, how to select, deselect or select multiple objects at once and so on okay so uh, let's say we have created a bunch of uh, these materials now the first thing or object sorry now the first thing is as you know we had three transformation tools which were move rotate and scale and if you go over these commands you will see that the name is select and move so or select and rotate or select and scale the reason for this is this these tools also select the objects as well as you can see if i click on any object it will select them as well even though the name is move and there is another command uh, or tool which is called select objects this will only select the objects it won't move it won't rotate only if you click on any of these objects it will select them this tool exists so that you don't by mistake just select and move anything at once like if i just click and drag, you will see that it selects and also moves the object. But if you go, are in the select object, even though you drag the, your mouse, it will only create this selection uh, rectangle, which won't move or do anything to the object. It will only select the objects that it contains or crosses. We'll talk about the, this in a minute as well. Okay, uh, so the first thing is if you only want to select objects and you don't want to by mistake move them, as you select them, you go to this select object tool, which uh, the shortcut, by the way, is Q for this. OK, if you hit W, it's the move tool, E for rotate, R for scale and Q is for select objects tool. OK, uh, which is uh, very common for games, I guess, the short these shortcuts. Right. But again, be uh, careful about hitting Q more than once, just like in the scale tool, if you hit Q, more than once it will change or toggle something else th this one in here and let me show that to you if i hit q again this turned into a circle which is uh, which will change your selection window to this circle and if you hit q again it will change to a fence selection which you can drag a fence and then select objects we'll talk about this uh, more in depth in a bit this is the last so if you hit q again this is the last selection and if I hit Q again, this is the paint selection. And this one is the last selection tool. And if you hit Q again, it will go back to the regular uh, old rectangle tool. Okay. So uh, hitting more than once to Q will change your selection mode, selection window mode at least. Okay. Okay. Let's start from the beginning again. And then we'll come uh, back to these uh, selection modes. Uh, now, first thing, if you hit uh, click on an object, it will select it. If you click anywhere else in your scene in an empty space, it will deselect everything you selected. Or the shortcut for this is Control D, but usually we just hit an empty space. But sometimes you work really close to something, uh, maybe like this, and you work on the polygons, let's say, we add an edit poly and like you are trying to model something in here, and there are not any empty areas, so you can hit Control D to deselect it. You won't need it that much in my opinion uh, that's the first thing uh, we should talk about uh, let's talk about these uh, selection modes again if you just click and drag on an empty space it will create a selection window which by default in 3ds max selects the object objects it crosses okay so if i uh, release now it will select this this and these teapots let's uh, try it out as you can see it selected them uh, even though it didn't contain all the uh, pixels that are shown by that uh, teapot even though it only crosses the teapot it will select that anyways because we're in the crossing selection option if I change this to window then you will see that it will only select this teapot which it contains as you can see all the pixels of the object that is shown in the viewport of course and I can do the same thing for here as well uh, both of these are very useful I usually uh, use the default mode but you may want to toggle between these two modes and uh, they are very useful when you get to know how to use them really. Okay. So let's talk about these modes again. Uh, the second mode was the circle mode and this will just 
create a circular uh, selection window and it will select all the object it crosses because we're in the cross mode of course again you can change these modes uh, in here as well uh, let me show how this circular selection could come handy let's say we have a cylinder like this and we increase the cap segments and if I hit T and go here uh, I only want to select these faces for example let's uh, add an edit poly hit 4 and you could do the select these faces like this it's a shortcut you can select any of this hold shift and click on the next one this will do a ring selection but it won't work for these faces for example okay and you can just change to a circular selection mode and just do this in the crossing option of course and you can you need to deselect these of course because it will select both of them but uh, if you want to make this selection at one go you can click on the ignore back phasing option in here and do this then it won't select that uh, bottom those bottom bottom faces okay it will only select these and you can see that it may come in handy uh, in these situations or you want to select this and these faces you can just do this and you can select those two rings I guess okay let's go to the fence selection which works like this if you again click and drag to an empty space or empty pixel then release your mouse you can just uh, go ahead and draw this fence and it will just put these corners in here and if you go to the beginning again and click once more it will select uh, whatever it crosses again let's uh, create uh, try to select more objects at once and it will select these objects as you can see uh, this is very uh, useful as well because sometimes let's say this is a garden and you want to select certain trees in here or certain plants in here you can instantly uh, create an interesting selection with these tools or uh, most of the time let's say you have a landscape like this okay and you want to distribute some plants random uh, selection in here or not random but a, an organic selection in here you can go ahead and assign an edit poly on top of this hit 4 to go into the polygon selection tool and you can just create a random selection and this now these faces are selected as you can see okay you can even detach this from here what well, whatever <laughs> let's leave the edit poly comments to later lessons I guess I'm a little bit excited and I want to just get into edit poly a little bit fast because it's the very core of the 3ds Max is you can do so much cool things with it but whatever let's leave it for now fourth tool in here fourth mode in here is the lasso selection tool you can as you can see uh, I'm holding and uh, clicking and holding and dragging the mouse and you, uh, you can do this type of selection which is again very handy when you want to do selections like I don't know a hand-drawn area I guess or in a character you want to select certain vertices we use this a lot on, on those type of uh, situations and also the last one is the paint selection tool uh, which I rarely use I guess but this tool has an interesting way of working it selects the objects by order if you are using 3ds Max scripts and you want to use arrays selections as arrays for example this may come handy but I assume you are a beginner if you are listening to this lesson so I guess at first it won't come uh, that much useful to you uh, but you, what you can do with this is you can just hold and drag to an empty space and keep dragging and if you, as you can see the objects it hits it will select that's the, that's what this tool does okay you can just go ahead and select everything or just and also what you can do with these selection tools is let's go back to the normal mode now uh, this is not the only way to select multiple objects of course and uh, selecting multiple objects is very important in 3ds max because you want to do the same effect or you want to create the same effect for all the selections you made and let's say we have selected these and we want to add this to the selection but we can't do it with a window regular window because if we do this everything will be selected so what you do in these type of situations is hold control and just click here once again and you will see that this one is added to this selection so control added, adds to the current selection uh, you had in your hand and if you hold alt and click on a selected object it will deselect the object okay alt deselects the object control adds to the selection alt removes from the selection 
So you can just hold Alt and just deselect this and hold Control and select this, for example, okay? Uh, this also works in the sub-object modes. Like if you have an edit poly again, you can just select this and hold Control and add these, for example. And also uh, you can hold Alt and deselect. Oops, sorry. You can hold Alt and deselect these as well, for example, okay? So as you can see, I can uh, do very specific selections with 3ds Max, which is, as I told you, very, very important. Uh, so try to work on this. There are two more selection uh, tools uh, in 3ds Max. Actually, there are a bunch more, but I, I want to talk about two more <laughs> because if we go uh, through all of these, it will get kind of boring, I guess. But these two tools I use a lot too, so I really want to mention these. Uh, first one is the selection sets. If you go back to this selection, for example, a lot, uh, let's say you apply something to these three objects and then s render the scene and see how it is and then go back to this selection and you want to uh, edit more these objects. And did this three times and you can see that you will need to select these more and more as the scene evolves. So let's sum it up. You want to go back to the selection a lot. Okay. This is, uh, you want to save this selection, let's say. Th this is where uh, selection sets come in handy. If you select these three teapots and just name them from here, three teapots, for example, if you just deselect and work on any other thing, whenever you go back here, click this drop down button and click on this, these three objects will be again selected. Okay. Let's see if this works for sub-objects as well. If you, I select these three, uh, four faces, sorry, <laughs> I forgot the count. Uh, these four faces, and then I will name them police, 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 police. Sorry, I guess it was, it was this, is, this doesn't seem right, but let's rename this. Ah, okay. Poly, okay, whatever. And if I deselect them, go here, just click once more and you can see that, wow, this is cool. I uh, haven't used this for faces, by the way, but now I, now what I'm going to use because this is what I really need to be able to select certain faces again and again. Uh, let's say you are modeling a cushion, for example, and you have something like this box. And let's create more faces or segments. Let's keep this at five and hit apply and edit poly. Let's say you selected these edges. What is it? Grow, grow, which we will talk about this a lot. And you have this kind of selection, for example, and you edit everything. Let's say cushion edge. And let's just uh, try this. Yeah, you can again go here and work on these edges add noise to them or add little bumps in here i guess or add little wrinkles in here and then uh, go ahead and do your work and then you can again come back to this uh, selection which is very cool uh, in my opinion i couldn't show you that much uh, in there but we will create a realistic cushion throughout this course so you will see what i mean in later uh, lessons okay the last thing i want to talk about is the selection uh, scene explorer sorry the old version for this is select by name, which the shortcut is H, which has a shortcut H. And you can go ahead and select uh, objects by name in here. You can use Control and Alt again in this menu. Uh, only Control, sorry, Alt doesn't work, I guess, yeah. Uh, but you could use Shift uh, to select a list or array of objects, I guess. And if you hit OK, it will select those named objects. And you, we should, of course, name these three teapots, but these are just for exercising, so I didn't name them. But if you hit H, you should see something meaningful in here if you want to use this, of course. And the new or the more modern way to use this is Tools Scene Explorer. And here you can, in Select by Name, you could do this as well, but let me show all the common things between these uh, windows. You can search uh, by name, let's say teapot, but let's create, we need to create another object, I guess, for this. We have created a box, let's say, and if you search for the box in here, you'll see that it filters the objects with this name. 
So this is very uh, useful. You click once. You don't need to hit OK because this is a fixed window, I guess. You can just dock this anywhere you want. For example, let's say we want to put this on the left side here. And you can just go ahead and select everything from here as you model stuff. Uh, select by name didn't have that, so I really like to use this one a little bit better, uh, in my opinion. I guess this one came from Maya, uh, if I if my memory is serving me well right now. But if I'm mistaken, please <laughs> let me know in the comments. So these are the selection tools for 3ds Max or in 3ds Max. I hope this was useful. If this was useful, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell next to the sub, uh, subscription button. Uh, thanks for listening. See you in the next lesson.